How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donnie here again. This time we're going to take a look at some practice problems for 20.6, effect of concentration on cell EMF. So objectives being to calculate the electromotive force at non-standard conditions using the Nernst equation and relate it to the equilibrium constant. So we got really one equation, but two forms of it. So here we have the uh, cell potential is equal to the cell potential at standard conditions minus R times T for temperature divided by N, the number of electrons being transferred, times F, the Faraday constant, times the natural log of Q being that reaction quotient. Or if you want to do it at standard temperature and combine all those constants, you end up with this version of that equation. I, for whatever reason, keep going back to this one. That's one that I, I lean on. All right, number one, based on the reaction, there it is, which of the following would not change the measured cell potential? Let's see, we know that our equation is that E equals E naught uh, minus RT on NF times natural log of Q. So Q for this one is gonna be that, uh, let's see, products, the H2 gas over the H plus ion concentration. So let's see. So anything in this equation will affect the cell potential. So if we lower the pH, we're changing the H plus concentration, so that will affect the uh, cell potential. Addition of more tin metal to the anode compartment. Well, tin metal, not a part of this equation, so this one should not. Uh, and I'll come back to that though. Increasing the tin two ion concentration in the anode compartment, well, oh, I forgot that one, oops. Times, look at that, that's what happens when you don't look too closely. That one is one of the products and it's aqueous, so it's part of the expression. Uh, this one will affect the cell voltage. Uh, increasing the pressure of hydrogen gas in the cathode compartment, yes. Right, we got H2 right there. Uh, so that, that's gonna affect things. And then E, any of the above will change the measured cell potential. Uh, no. All right, going back to this. So this kind of perplexed me a little bit because I know if I was making a voltaic cell and I used like uh, more of the metal uh, electrode, the voltage would change. And the reasons for that is resistance. So the potential isn't gonna change, but the amount of resistance might change. So like practically, if you're making one and you add more tin metal to the electrode or you increase its surface area, you might be changing the resistance, which could change the voltage, but the actual potential voltage that it could produce, that's gonna stay the same. All right, number two, the standard cell potential or the E naught for the cell for the reaction below is positive 1.10 volts. The cell potential for this reaction is blank volts when the concentrations of Cu plus two is this and Zn plus two is that. So again, let's write out our equation. So E is gonna equal E naught minus R times T on N F times natural log of Q. So let's figure out my Q. My Q is gonna be the concentration of the product. So here I have Zn plus two and Cu solid, it's not gonna be a part of it because it's a solid, divided by, let's see, I got Cu plus two ion in aqueous solution and Zn solid, which is not gonna be part of it. So that's my Q. So I'm just gonna substitute that in. Zn plus two over Cu plus two. So now let's see, they gave me my Zn, they gave me my Cu, they're asking for E, they give me my E naught, R is a constant, T, let's see, did they specify temperature? They didn't, so let's, let's assume that it's at 298 Kelvin. That is like the standard temperature, um, so we're gonna use that. And then N, how many electrons are being transferred? Well, we have a Cu plus two becoming a Cu zero, so that's telling me it must have gained two electrons. Uh, let's check Zn though. It goes from Zn0 to Zn plus 2, so it must have lost 2 electrons. So it's definitely 2. So my N is equal to 2. All right, so let's do some plugging and chugging. My E naught is positive 1.10 volts minus my R, 8.314 times 298 Kelvin, all over 2 times 96,500 for my Faraday constant times the natural log of, well, let's see, Zn plus two, they said in the problem is 3.5 molar, so 
five molar divided by my Cu plus two, which is right here, one times 10 to the minus five. And when I plug and chug in my calculator, I end up with a final answer of 0 0.94 volts. That's number two. Number three, the standard cell potential of a voltaic cell constructed using the cell reaction below is 0.76 volts with a pressure of H2 at one atmosphere, zinc being plus two uh, molar concentration, cell potential is 0.66 volts. What is the concentration H plus? So again, I'm gonna have to go, what is my Q expression here? Products, so I got the pressure of H2 times the concentration of Zn plus two all over well let's see what's in the reactants i got h2 uh i'm sorry h plus being squared right here in the zinc solid not going to be a part of it so i go back to my Ernst equation e equals e naught minus r times t on n f times the natural log of q q being ph2 times zn plus 2 concentration all over the concentration of H plus squared. I'm trying to get the H plus. So I got to do a little little algebra. So first step is I'm going to try to get the the E's on one side and the, my natural log on the other. So I end up with a natural log of maybe I should have left it as Q because this is a lot of writing all over H2 or H plus being squared equals uh what did i get e naught minus e so i did a little algebra i uh you know i could have added this whole thing to the other side and then i subtracted e from both sides and that's how i got this one so now how do i get rid of my natural log well i got to put the whole other side to the base of e so i get e to the e naught minus e equals the nat i'm sorry got rid of the natural log pressure of h2 times concentration of zn plus two all over the concentration of h plus squared so now i got to get the h plus onto the other side so i do a little more algebra i end up with the h plus squared equals the ph2 times the concentration of zn plus two all over the e to the e naught minus e and then if i want to get h plus by itself i take the square root of both sides so now i can just plug and chuck i find the pressure of my h2 is one atmosphere the pressure of my zn plus two one molar my e uh, is 0.66 volts my e naught is 0.76 volts and when i plug and chug and get my answer i end up with uh, 0.020 molar as my final answer. All right, number four. A voltaic cell is constructed with two silver silver chloride electrodes, where the half reaction is given as followed. The concentrations of the chloride ion in the two compartments are this molar and that molar, respectively. What is the cell EMF? All right, so this one is pretty cool. I like these ones. So we got Ag plus in a diluted side plus ag uh, i'm sorry this is the concentrated so we have concentrated ag plus uh high concentration let me draw it out for you real quick so we got really high concentration over here and then maybe we got low concentration over here so we know that we want to decrease the ag plus on this side where it's concentrated and we want to increase the Ag plus on this side where it's diluted. So the way that's gonna work is, well, how do I decrease the Ag plus concentration? I can reduce it. So my Ag plus is gonna get reduced. My Ag zero in the other electrode is going to get oxidized. So I'm gonna end up with Ag plus, or just Ag zero on the concentrated side and Ag plus being made on the diluted side. Now, what does that mean for my Q? You know, I got these two concentrations of Ag plus, which one is going on top, which one's going on bottom? Well, my Q is gonna be the concentration of the product, which is the Ag plus of the diluted side, 
uh, divided by the concentration of the Ag plus that is more concentrated. All right. Uh, so what is the cell EMF? Well, we know that E is equal to E naught. In this case, since we have you know this happening in one direction, but we also have it happening in the other direction, the E naught for this process is going to be equal to zero. Right? What's how reactive? How reactive is Ag plus with Ag plus? It's not. Right, uh, and the thing that's driving this forward is the difference in concentration. So our E naught is zero, and then uh, plus, or I'm sorry, minus R T on N F times the natural log of Q, which is going to be the A G plus concentration, where it's diluted on top, divided by the A G plus concentration that is more concentrated on the bottom. Uh, so now I can plug and chuck. Uh, zero minus, so it's really just minus RT, 8.314 times, it didn't specify, so I'm going to assume it's happening at 298 Kelvin. On N, how many electrons are being transferred? Well, it's going from plus to zero, so that's one electron, times my Faraday constant of 96500, times the natural log of where it's more diluted, so 0 0.0222 divided by where it's concentrated, 2.22. Uh, now I plug and chug, and I get 0.118 volts as my final answer. All right, so what's, what's really motivating that? It's just the difference in concentrations. We know things want to diffuse from high concentration to low concentration. With this um, concentration cell setup, they can't actually have the ions uh, flow but you can have electrons flow from one side to the other. So you can go, hey, where it's more diluted, send electrons to where it's more concentrated so it can reduce those ions and we'll make ions where it's diluted. Number five, the standard cell potential for the reaction below is 0.63 volts. What is the cell potential for this reaction when Zn is 3.5 molar and Pb plus two is two times 10 to the minus four? So again, we're gonna have to figure out my Q expression products. So concentration is Zn plus two because it's aqueous. Pb, not going to be a part of it, divided by the reactants. Well, I got a concentration of Pb plus 2 because it's aqueous, and the Zn solid, not going to be a part of it. So this is my Q expression. So let's see, they give me my E0, they give me my concentrations, so I'm, it looks like I'm set. I got E equals the E0 minus RT on NF times the natural log of Q. So Q we just figured is the Zn plus two concentration divided by the Pb plus two concentration on the bottom. So it looks like I can just plug and chug. They told me the E naught is a positive 0.63 volts minus R 8.314 times T. They didn't specify, so I'm gonna assume 298 Kelvin divided by N. Well, how many electrons are being transferred? I go from plus two to zero, or from zero to plus two, so I know that that is two electrons being transferred, times 96,500, times the natural log of Q, so the concentration of Zn plus two is 3.5, divided by the concentration of Pb plus two, which is 2.0 times 10 to the minus four, so now I can just pick up my handy dandy calculator and beep bop, beep bop, boop, and I end up with 0 0.50 volts as my final answer for that. All right, we got one more. Six, the standard EMF for the cell using the overall reaction here is positive 0.48 volts. What is the EMF generated when the cell has this concentration for nickel plus two and that concentration for zinc plus two? So same equation, E equals E naught minus RT on NF times the natural log of Q. So let me figure out my Q real quick. I got my products, my Zn plus two, aqueous concentration, nickel being a solid, not gonna be included. And my reactants, well I got nickel plus two in solution, and then I got zinc solid, so since it's solid, not gonna be a part of that expression. So I can substitute in my Q expression. Now let's see, they told me everything except temperature, so I'm going to assume 298. So let me do some plugging and chugging. E0, they said, is positive 0.48 volts minus RT, 8.314 times 298 
all over n, how many electrons are being transferred? Well, nickel goes from plus two to zero, so that's two electrons. And if I look at zinc, it goes from zero to plus two, that's also two electrons. So I know there's two electrons being transferred times my Faraday constant, 96500, times the natural log of Q. Now the concentration of zinc is 0 0.100 over concentration of nickel, 2.50. So now when I plug and chug, I end up with a 0.52 volts as my final answer. I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.